Welcome back to the game development for Windows Phone tutorial. In today's episode we're going to expand on our Mango Lander game by adding some basic collision detection between the lander and the level that we set up in the last episode. We'll also add some basic game state tracking that we can build on in future episodes. So let's jump right in here. Firstly you'll see that I've set up a source code file called state.cs um, and within that I've declared an enumerator game state with some uh, basic states that we can be in. So active, game over, pause, pretty basic. In the future we could expand this um, to have like menu states and things like that. Um, so let's track this state within our game class. I'm going to create a game state variable called current state. And then we'll initialize this in our constructor. Uh, current state equals game state dot active. And then um, we're going to actually put this to use right away. We'll come down here into our update code, and um, I'm only going to process the touches and move the items on screen if the game state is currently active. So uh, this is just a simple if statement. If current state is active, uh, then we accept touch, update the lander, update um, gravity and the thruster and all of that. Uh, so now our physics is all gated on this game state property, which is exactly what we want. Uh, next we'll add some additional state to the lander. I want to um, store whether or not the player is currently alive or dead, so I'm going to uh, add a boolean value called dead, and this is going to initially be set to false. And while we're here, I'm just going to fix a minor bug from the previous episode um, to do with get screen rectangle. Actually, this is probably from a few episodes ago, but I only noticed it when I uh, sat down to write today's episode. So I discovered that we don't actually need to offset the X and Y coordinates when we're drawing um, the sprite to the screen. So we'll just get rid of those. Um, and one more minor change before we get into the collision detection code. I had implemented my level class with um, a list of points and the drawback of points is that they only store integers for their x and y coordinates and we actually want to store floating point values um, for doing the collision detection. So I'm just going to change point to vector2 and then update corresponding places in the code where um, point used to appear, like so. Pretty straightforward. So, uh, let's talk about collision detection. There are a number of ways to, uh, to do collision detection in any game, each with its pros and cons, um, and in our case we're doing a relatively simple detection in 2D space, so we're not doing 3D, we're only doing 2D, and it's between a single entity, which is our lander, and um, just the, the level. So we're only detecting collisions between the lander and the level. Um, the level is comprised of a set of uh, vectors. Um, and we can approximate the lander as a box to make things even simpler. You could use a third party library to do collision detection and the physics of the game for that matter. Um, Box2D or Farseer spring to mind. However, our requirements do not call for friction or bouncing or anything um, complicated like that and therefore I chose to go with a simple algorithm um, that I'll do my best to explain here. So here's our lander. Um, basically we treat each of the four sides of the lander as a single line segment between two points. Then we consider the level to be a series of line segments. Based on these assumptions, detecting a collision is just a matter of detecting a line intersection between uh, one of the lander lines and one of the level lines. Uh, that's a lot of L words, but uh, basically we just need an algorithm to detect the intersection between two line segments. And we can reduce our collision detection to a series of calls to that algorithm. Uh, we check pairs of lines in turn. One from the lander, one from the level, 
um, with another one from the lander, another one from the level, and so on. So each of the level line segments is checked uh, against each of the four lander segments, if that makes sense. Um, we can do some optimization, so we only check nearby level segments, uh, segments that are near to the lander. Um, but basically, when we find an intersection, then a collision has occurred. Hopefully this is a reasonably straightforward concept to grasp. I went hunting online for a simple algorithm that detects line segment intersections and found that there are a number of ways to do this, but I chose to go with a variant of the formula described here. Um, it's kind of messy and a little bit complicated. You can find a link uh, in the description below. I'm not going to go into great detail on the algorithm and how I implemented it, um, rather we'll just treat it as something of a black box for the sake of simplicity and if you want to go in depth on the formula yourself then that's up to you. So with that I'm going to paste this function in here into our lambda class. As you can see it takes start and end points A1 and A2, B1 and B2 uh, for two line segments A and B and returns a boolean that is true if the segments intersect and false if they don't. So let's start writing some code that actually uses this function. Let's call it uh, do collision, and it takes a level object like that. Uh, first of all, let's get the basic uh, screen space rectangle. So rectangle rect uh, equals this dot screen uh, get screen rectangle. So this is the rectangle before any rotation has been applied. Um, note that this is the place where I first found the bug um, I mentioned earlier. Uh, then we need to extract the four points that determine the corners of the lander. This involves some complicated looking trigonometry that I'm going to attempt to explain very briefly. If math isn't your thing, then feel free to zone out for a moment, I totally understand. <laughs> uh, first we need to determine the angle that I've shown here. Uh, between the horizontal and the top right point. We can do this using the inverse tangent as I'll demonstrate in a moment. Once we have calculated uh, this angle once, it's easy enough to calculate the angle for the other corners by uh, subtracting and adding the value from 180 degrees. So once we have those, um, we add the rotation of the lander like so and using sine and cosine and the length of the line segment I've highlighted with LEN here, we can determine X and Y offsets from the center of the lander. After that we just rinse and repeat for the other three corners. Here's how we determine the base angle for the first point. We take the inverse tan, otherwise known as arc tan or a tan in C sharp, and we perform that function on the ratio of the height over the width of the lander. And here's how we calculate the length uh, LEN from the diagram. And now we have everything that we need to calculate the four corners of the lander. Um, to save my poor hands, I'm going to just paste this in. Uh, paste this in here, and it looks kind of long and complicated, but I'm essentially just doing what I was showing in the diagram. I'm using cos, I'm using uh, sine, I'm using base angle and rotation, and uh, adding and subtracting 180 degrees, otherwise known as pi if you're using radians, um, and I'm just determining the points corresponding to the uh, top right, top left, bottom left, and bottom right corners. Remember, you can always download the code for this episode in the link uh, in the description if you want to take a closer look at this code, uh, but essentially I'm just doing what I described in the diagram. The next step is to actually test for collisions. First we're going to do some optimization. Clearly we don't need to check parts of the level that aren't even close to our lander, so let's determine a region that we're interested in. We already have this length value here, uh, which is technically the maximum deviation left or right that one of the corners of our lander could take uh, from the center of the lander. So let's use that um, and it looks like this. So we're just saying the minimum value of x that we're interested in is the 
middle of the lander, so position.x plus half the width, uh, and then subtract the length, and the same for the maximum x that we're interested in. Now we declare a few helper variables. Uh, last point equals zero. This is the last point that we're gonna that we tested for uh, a collision, and we have a boolean value collision that actually tracks if we found a collision or not, um, and then we iterate over all of the points in the level. Uh, so for each of the points in the level, we test if the, uh, the point, so level.terrain of i dot x, we see if that's more than or equal to our minimum x, and we also check that it's less than the max. Like that. So if this is true, then we're interested in this level point and then we do the actual intersection check. I'm just going to copy some code in here again. Uh, it'll be very boring to watch me type all of this out. Uh, as you can see, I'm testing the current line segment uh, between terrain points i and i plus 1, and I'm testing it against each of the four sides of the lander in turn, so top right to top left, top left to bottom left, and so on. Uh, and if any of those is true, I set collision to be true and I stop calculation stop further calculation so this breaks out of the for loop then I'm going to return true if collision was uh, set to true at any point uh, otherwise we return false note that if I am checking the leftmost line segment that matches our region of interest I also want to test backwards by one point. I'm just going to paste in some extra code to do that. It looks very similar to what we already have, only we're testing for the line segment of i minus 1 rather than i plus 1. And there's a simple if statement uh, so that we only do it once. Now let's actually check for collisions in our game class. So after we've updated the lander position, I'm going to say if lander.do collision. This is our new method that we just created. Let's pass in the level. If this is true, then we obviously collided with the level, and so we're going to say the lander is now dead. And the current state is now game over. And let's also have a little fun with the draw code while we're at it. Uh, let's say uh, if the lander is dead, we're going to draw it uh, red. Otherwise, we'll just use what we had before. Like so. And I think we're done. And it's probably about time I actually run this thing so you can uh, see that I'm not just all talk and it is actually working. Uh, so here we go. It's running as normal. Uh, colors when you thrust are the same. Basically, everything's the same, but when the lander touches the level, it turns red and it stops moving, just as we expect. I'm not going to show this running on my actual phone this week, uh, but it does run just fine and it works with the rotation that we've set up in previous episodes. The collision code itself is not overly optimized, uh, it's not perfect, but hopefully it gets you started and it can be applied in other situations as well. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in seeing future episodes. I'm interested in reading any comments you may have. Thumbs up the video if you liked it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.